So we all saw the announcement this past week that The Undertaker was going to do his final farewell at Survivor Series 2020. His final farewell. Tying into what you saw in that Last Ride documentary, it would certainly appear that the dead man is ready to ride off into the sunset and officially call it wraps on his career. And, you know, it, it's interesting to me because this is a moment I've been expecting for years. I don't know that I would say I've been looking forward to it, but there is a part of me that after so many years of watching this guy and how much he's meant to me as a fan of him as a wrestler, what he's meant to the company, what he's meant to other fans, what he's meant to the business and the industry, like... One thing I was always conscientious of was that I didn't want him to see him hang around too long and not go out in the blaze of glory like he deserved to do. And it feels like over the past several years, it's been this balance of they break the streak because they're stupid, but then he still comes back anyway. So these next few years at WrestleMania, the matches are just kind of, ugh, they just don't have the pop or the impact anymore. And every time he goes out there and he works a good one, then you think, okay, well, he's got some more. And then he wrestles a really bad one, and you're like, oh, you got to get that taste out of your mouth. you got to wrestle another good one, and then he does. It'll kind of be this back and forth between a good match and a real clunker or stinker, especially some of those Saudi matches. Thank God I didn't watch them the first time when they happened. Um, but, you know, it's tricky when you get to a point in time like The Undertaker and as long as his career is last, like when is truly the right time to call it quits? You know, I think a lot of fans might say that it probably should have been at WrestleMania 28, that end of an era match. Like that should have been it. That final shot of him and Triple H and Shawn Michaels at the top of the ramp. And he could have left 20-0. and 0, The streak would have stayed intact. And it was a great match, ended that rivalry, that story that had played out for years between Sean and Taker and then folding Triple H and Taker into it. Uh, and you know what? I got to say, like, in an ideal world, yeah. Looking back, I wish it would have stopped there. Because what a high note to go out on. Because to me, I always looked at Taker and WrestleMania, and I know what people are going to say about, you know, Taker was too unselfish and respected and loved the business too much, like, Someday he was going to put somebody over and end the streak, and I understand that. But you know, for all that he meant to the company and all that he's given to the company, it was like the streak had gotten to such a monster. Like working with Taker at WrestleMania was a bigger deal than wrestling for one of the world titles. It absolutely was. Anybody think that otherwise is crazy. Like people lost, won and lost world titles all the time at WrestleMania. Taker never lost at WrestleMania. That was the main event every year in theory, even when it didn't go on last, even when it should have gone on last, such as WrestleMania 25. Imagine, imagine thinking, hey, it's Shawn Michaels and Undertaker at WrestleMania. Let's put them in the middle of the card. And that's, that's going to work out well. <laughs> Morons. But, like, if you were going to talk about when you truly ideally would have liked to have seen a guy that was relatively in peak form say, you know what? Enough's enough. It's time for me to ride off into the sunset. God, that would have been such an outstanding, excellent time. And he just stayed around too long. Like, even when you look at the streak being broken by Brock, you know, it's one thing that it was Brock, and it was another thing that the streak was broken, but that match was just so bad. Like, and the fact that it was broken in that manner, in that match, like, that's what really sucked about it. And the fact was that he just kept coming back for more. So, you know... Admittedly, I approach Survivor Series and this final farewell with a ton of cynicism and skepticism. And as much as they've been pumping this up and as much as they've been hyping it up, I would like to believe that this is truly The Undertaker's swan song and this is him officially retiring and going off into the sunset because, man, you want to talk about a full circle type of thing. Like his career in WWF effectively began 30 years ago debuting at Survivor Series 1990. What better way to have it close out for than for him to put the final bow on it at Survivor Series 2020? Like, that would be absolutely fantastic. Like, 
full circle type of stuff and all of that. What a great story. But then you think about it and you say, this is the true Rus Mr. WrestleMania. I'll talk about that later in the 30 Days of Taker radio series. Like, he, he is and always will be <laughs> the real Mr. WrestleMania, no matter what you try to tell me about Shawn Michaels. Give me a break. Um, so should it come at WrestleMania instead? And I just, I think about it and I say, how crappy it would be in a year like 2020 and all that 2020 has been that The Undertaker might potentially retire in front of no fans. I, that just doesn't feel right. It just seems so unfair, so unfortunate, and such crap. Like, this is the type of thing that when you think about it, in an ideal world, if you were going to do this here and you're asking me, well, how do you put that segment together? I say, that's the main event. You have Roman, whatever Roman's going to do at Survivor Series goes on second to last. He's the tribal chief. This is The Undertaker. Taker is the main event. Taker is the thing that everybody wants to see. Outside of our tribal chief, of course. Taker is the one that, that we're there for. That has to close the show. That has to main event, period. Because nothing, and I emphasize again, absolutely nothing would be able to follow it, especially if you were in an arena of 20,000 fans or a stadium of 50 or even 60,000 fans. And what a shame it is. Like, you could sit there and sell out a 60, 70,000 seat stadium for even Survivor Series just off of the back of people thinking this is their one last time to potentially see The Undertaker in person. Like, that is a draw. And immediately would sell out the event with the quickness, I promise you. And in fact, if you put tickets out for sale now, they probably have a lot of people who say, hell with COVID, I'm going to risk it to go see Taker one last time. And I got to admit, like, I'd be double masking up and everything, but if it was close to me, like, I would certainly be considering it too. Life is about risks and chances, but having the chance to be able to see Undertaker one more time in person before he rides off into the sunset, like, I might be weighing my risks and my chances pretty strongly, I've got to say, and I know a lot of other people would too, or they wouldn't even weigh in, they just say, like, screw that, I'm going, whatever happens, happens. But the thought of him having to do it in a Thunderdome or the thought of him having to do it in front of no real fans in person, like, that just sucks. Just absolutely sucks. And it's what makes me hope that it isn't truly it, that maybe they kick the can down the road a little bit, or maybe they use this final farewell and they hype it up and they're making it this big thing because you're going to get one last big deal for WrestleMania for him. Maybe you say, frick it. I don't know what Sting's condition is, but maybe Sting comes and challenges them one last time and they both ride off in the sunset. Maybe that's in the cards. Maybe somebody else is going to come out and challenge Taker. Who knows? And maybe this is truly it. And if it is, more power to him. It's long since been time, but he's absolutely earned the right. When you're thinking about Mark Calloway, he has absolutely 100% earned the right to retire whenever the hell he wants. Like it's his call and his call alone. He's earned that right. Some of us, like me, certainly would have liked to have seen him retire a few years ago because we feel like he stayed about a couple of matches too long. And that is true. But when you've done what he's done, you've given what he's given, and you've helped as much as you've helped over the years, you've absolutely earned that right to be treated in the way that you want and to be given the opportunity to make the call on when your career ends and not have anybody else make that call for you. But I, again, I cannot just stress or emphasize enough like how truly disappointing it would be. Like that, that would be it. Like maybe the next time you would see him is at a Hall of Fame induction where you could potentially have, again, no fans there. Like, how much would that suck? 2020 is already a crappy enough year as it is. Like, I'm really not looking forward to a final farewell for Taker where you don't have, like, the continuous 10 or 15 minutes standing um, ovation that he merits and deserves and would certainly get easily. Like, Taker deserves that. Frankly, the fans deserve that closure, too. Everybody involved deserves that closure. So I wish the timing on this was different. I wish we could potentially punt this to next year so you could potentially have close to or maybe even a stadium full of fans. But tis not to be, apparently. 
We will see what happens. I'm still a little bit cynical of whether this is truly retirement or not. Maybe we're getting worked. We certainly could be. Or it might be legit. It might also be. Um, but, you know, just thinking about this, like, if it truly is the end, like, for a lot of us older fans, like some of these other wrestlers that have come and gone, some of these other wrestlers that have retired, some of these other uh, wrestlers that have expired, if you know what I mean, like, those are things that hit us kind of hard and make us think about our mortality a little bit, think about the loss of our childhood and some of our innocence and so forth. But when you're talking about Taker, man, like, it's a whole different level. Like, he's been there, you know, as a wrestler for me from my early days, pre-teen, teenage, early adult, middle adult, you know, almost middle age now. Like, yeah, it's really awkward to think about a wrestling world for me that doesn't have The Undertaker involved in some ways. Kind of a sobering reality, it really is. Um, so I guess I'll ask you guys at this point, the, those of you that are actually watching this, like, do you expect this to truly be the final farewell? Are you disappointed that this final farewell could potentially come in front of no fans? How would you do this? Like, would you do something different? Do you think we're getting worked here? Do you think it's going to lead to something bigger and better potentially for Mania? Curious to hear you guys' thoughts in the comments. Make sure you check out the other videos as part of this 30 Days of Taker video series. We're now on day eight. Eight down, 22 to go. We can do this. We can do this.